All right, let's do a little review, why don't we? Absolutely. I'm going to fold my paper into fourths and we'll do a couple of heads. Oh, good. Other strength. I'm going to let him in. Hi, Frank. Hi. You're here just in time. We're just starting with some practice heads. They were about to miss you. <laughs> I still don't see Frank, even though I hear him. <laughs> see if I can spot that in my video. There we go. Okay. We're going to start with our favorite shape, the circle. I always call it a circle, but we would probably want to think of it as a ball having three dimensions, form. You can see mine's quite messy. That's all right. As long as we think about that form. And we'll add an eye line somewhere on that ball. And also a nose line somewhere on that ball. I'm going to try something a little different today. I just learned this. We're going to cut off the brow section by putting a little slant on the edge of the ball there, coming around with the brow line and using that same slant over here. So we're just going to carve this chunk out of our ball. Oh, there's Michaela. Let's let her in. Hi. Hi there. Hi, Michaela. Then we're going to set the eye socket right inside. Hey, what's today? Big cats. Oh, hey, did you check out um the the that uh, wiki that I was telling you about last time? I looked up the cheetah characters of the Lion Guard, and I was a that is one of the worst cheetah designs I've ever seen in my life, so I'm not going to use it as a reference. <laughs> That's fair. Then I'll add the eyebrows on top of the socket. And then on the bottom of the socket, we're going to carve off just a little piece. And the rest will be filled in by the eye. On the other side, this eye socket is going to get covered up by that nose bridge a little bit more. So we might only see a tiny, tiny portion of this eye over here. And we'll go ahead and extend out that nose box. Oh, now that's a different way of doing the nose box. We used to come out with the flat of the nose. Yep. Let's try out something a little different so you can get a uh, variety of ways. If one way makes more sense than the other, that's the one you use. We'll see how good my line comes out. Maybe this isn't a great way. <laughs> I'll put the top of the nose and carve that out. That's the section you were talking about, right? Usually we come out. Yeah, with yeah, that works. There it is, right where it belongs. And I'll sketch in that bottom of the nose. And we remember that center line that comes down is going to come across the top of the nose so that we have wide side, narrow side coming down. 
So that will tell me where to start the mouth. And in the front, maybe a little bit of a frown. Once we get to that edge where the nose is, we can curve it back around. If you want your big cat to open his mouth, you can draw another shape underneath. And of course, stick in a couple of teeth. A little bump for the tongue. And for lions, they have those great big square chins. So I'm going to add a little extra. Come back around. And we also know that they have rather flat heads. So I'm going to take that brow line and just shave off that top portion of the head. And for the ears, we usually use this eye line to find the inner fold of the ear. It's a little S line right there. On the other side, if you followed it all the way around, you might see a tiny little bit come up. But normally when we're in three quarter, we just simplify it to a little U shape upside down. Remembering that it's thicker as it connects into that head and then thinner as it comes around. If you'd like to add a neck, you go right off of that head and a little more to the back, not straight up and down like a head on a fence post or not even as much as a human. We want to really have it go out to the side so we can imagine the body continuing all the way to the right. And you can fill in some eyes. Maybe just one, since the other one is so turned, you probably can't see the inside. Wait, is this supposed to be cheetah? No, this is just review of how to construct a head. Okay. Frank, I don't see you. Mikey, I don't see you. Yo. Is this me? Nope, I, I can't. You no, know, I you no. Know, my my camera Frank. is. <laughs> okay. I see you, Frank. I see that Mikey is not turning on our camera. You were sounding weak, Mikey. Are you feeling okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Good. 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 Yeah. And then if you want to throw on a mane, you can start from that center line and start crafting your lion's hairdo. You'll have some come in front of the ear. I'm going into the back. I'm just making this up so you can make up yours too. He looks like a younger lion, so I'm not going to do the whole, whole mane. And for the next one, we'll review a lioness head. Starting with that same circle, 
going around and around and around. Thinking of the ball, not the circle. I'm going to start seeing the ball. I'm going to start with the ball. And on that ball, we're going to put an eye line. And a nose line. Maybe not turned quite so much this time. Shall we try this new way again with the eyebrow line or go back to the old one? No, let's do the new one. We're, new one? We, need, we need practice. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take out a little bit of a chunk, not as much as our line. Our line was more tilted. This one is a little more straight up and down, a gentler angle. So I'm going to take that and copy it over here. So this is another way. Normally we would draw an oval over here to tell us, oh, that's the flat side of the head. Don't draw anything over there. But this is a different way to do it where you can carve out, oh, this is the front of the face. So all my features are going up front. Then we fill in those eye sockets anywhere inside here, but we need to leave a little bit of room for the nose so you can block that out too if you like, just as a reminder. My eye sockets are going in there. And we add on those eyebrows on top. And carve out just a skinny little shape at the bottom. So that lower plane of the eye socket. And on the inside, we'll put the eye. I'm doing a little bit more of an almond shape eye this time. And then coming off that edge that we drew, I'm going to start the cheek. And get in this whole muzzle section. take that bridge of the nose and extend it forward. It doesn't have to stay within the shape that we just drew. If it goes out a little longer, that's fine. I'm going to keep mine fairly short. Thicken my nose. If you're not sure where to put the point of the nose, remember you can take that center line and just bring it all the way down your new shape. And for the mouth, let's say this one's surprised. <gasps> Can't believe you ate that caterpillar. I'm just going to put a little, kind of looks like a coat hanger. No. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I got my dog hanging out with me. Uh, PD, he hurt himself somehow. Oh. Yeah, he's got like this limp now. Oh, no. Yeah. And, you know, it's like when he's with my mom and he sleeps with her, like it, on her bed or whatever, mm -hmm. he'll, he won't get up to pee. He'll just pee. 
it's not not good not good no. yeah I'll... it seems to be getting better around right. Yeah. And then we'll come back to the top of the head and chisel that off, flatten it out. Ears. Where do we find the ears? We're going to follow that eye line until we get to their inner ear mark. Thicker as they connect right into that head. And that jawline is going to come right over the ear. I tend to draw pretty big ears on my lionesses. But if it starts looking a little too much like a monkey, you can tone it down a little bit. And again, uh oh, my internet connection is unstable. Uh oh, you might get dropped. Coming right off the top of that head, drawing through that ear very lightly so I know where her neck will be on the other side. And then for our finishing touch, we'll put some eyes. I'm going to make her a little cross-eyed and then put a bow around the end of her nose. Or maybe a butterfly. Oh, got a little messy, but I know the lines that I want. <laughs> Hello. Probably better do it this way. I have a heavy hand when it comes to drawing. A lot of pencils break. Oh, the glare makes it hard to see too. Well, I've tried. I see what time. For me. Works for you. All right. So the other two squares, you can fill in yourself another time because it's already 425 and we need to draw a cheetah. Let's draw a cheetah. Let's take a look at some reference pictures. Ooh. Long legs. Yes. Much longer than our very short lioness. And so we've got same kind of anatomy going on with this forward shoulder muscle. You can see right at that shadow, there's that bone we draw going forward. And it comes back. The elbow is still at about the same height as the body. And we've got nice long legs. There's that little angle that we draw forward. And then toes. For the back legs, you can see massive muscles in the thigh area. But it's a nice big block. Maybe a little wider on top, a little narrower there, but it's a nice big rectangle. And then it goes back, back, down, down. That'll be fun. And what else? His head is tiny. Yeah, for the relationship between the head and the body. Compared to our lions, his head is, yeah, real tiny. So we'll draw a smaller head. And yeah, I think that'll go pretty well. There's also a bigger difference between just the thickness of the torso and the front, and it goes quite a bit more narrow in the back. This is all just hanging fur. If you came up and touched his belly, this would all be just loose skin that you can maneuver. So we're looking at that shadow right there in particular for the actual torso. It gets real narrow. Or our lines tend to be just flat across. I couldn't believe how bulky they You're were. Cutting out and cutting in. I'm cutting out and cutting in. Maybe it's your weak internet. That could be it. Yeah, yeah. You, you sound fine here. But if you want to try logging off and logging back in, I will let you back in. Sometimes it's just, you know, you got to reset it, start over, something like that. 
Oh, there's also running ones. Because, you know, cheetahs run. There you can really see how thin in comparison to the bulky front body. Uh, we'll probably have time to draw maybe two of these. So maybe we'll do one running one, but let's start with the easier one or just perched on the rock. <laughs> Fairly thick tail, too. It's like as thick as his leg. Yeah. Yeah, especially these two have really thick tails. Oh, no, I guess the first one did, too. Yeah. I remember a long time ago on some nature show, they say the tail helps them steer as they're running so fast. I don't know if that's still scientifically accurate or not, but kind of it is. is. I've got my paper. Actually, doesn't Everybody, like wants to just info dump on cheetahs, but it's been forever since I've like looked up information on cheetahs, so I can't do it accurately. Absolutely. If we had a five hour class, for sure we'd research, but since we don't, it's all right. So I'm going to start with the body, kind of the body torso shape being that kind of a raindrop sideways, being thicker in front, getting thinner at the back. There's a slight up angle going up that way. You can see perched on the rock, we're gonna exaggerate that a little bit more, just so we get this heroic perch cheetah drawing looking cool. Oh, when you were talking, you cut out in a scary way. <laughs> then I'm going to stick on a form for the neck. And again, I'm going to have my head a little more elevated than this one. This one's pretty straight out in front, but I'm going to exaggerate with purpose. So I've got mine a little more angled up. And then I'll set my ball right at the end of that neck. Then I'll start working in these front leg forms. I'm going to zoom in a little more here. So we've got that shoulder blade, shoulder bump. I mean, right after the neck, boom, right there. Mine's maybe a little severe. Let's soften that up a little bit. And we can think of this wrapping around. Real fluid, and I feel like the key word for cheetahs is really fluid. And we know the elbow is going to happen right at the end of that torso. So now we get to put in our straight line. We were talking about curves and straights on Wednesday during anatomy class. And here's where it's applied to anatomy again. I've got these curving shoulder muscles. We'll go straight into our bony section. How tall do you make it? Eh, maybe about the same size as the body. Going a little bit forward. And then toes. After you've got the first foot, you can kind of sketch in a little rock that he's going to be standing on. Then the other leg, if I just draw through my drawing lightly, I can come off of this shoulder, come around to the front again. And stick in that other leg being overlapped by the one that's near us. And you can see the chest and the fur are really poking out from in between those legs. So I'm going to add a little more volume right in there. I'm 
trying to add a little more flow to the backbone and the torso, so I'm going to put a slight curve on my forms here. You don't have to, that's just one of the artistic choices I'm making. And from here, I can start working in that first back leg. I'm going to come right off the end and stick in that really large rectangular portion that ends pretty much halfway down the leg, or like halfway down this leg. We'll sweep back to that bony portion and forward again, stepping on the rock. On this side, I'm getting really angular, so on the inside, I'm going to go smoother, flowier. And you can see this little triangle section of possibly loose skin, probably some muscle in there, but that's going to be filled in right there. And then we'll add on the tail. So this one's got his tail just drooping down, regular low energy. That's fine if you want to do that. If you want to make it a little more majestic, you can sweep that tail to the back, have it more lifted and poised. As Christian mentioned before, they've got fairly thick tails that don't change shape that much. And then that last back leg, the other back leg, perched up closer to where the front feet are, so we can do that too. We can start out with what we can see being these angles right here. We can see this one has quite a nice curve to it before it goes into that one. Watch out for tangents. We've got a lot of lines happening in here. So if something seems to be flowing into a shape where it's not supposed to be, you might have to adjust your lines a little bit. I'm going to put a little angle change right on the rock so we can see that foot is stepping down there. I might not see too much of the toes. But you can also change the position if you prefer. Nobody's going to know you were drawing off this reference picture, so you have no fear of changing it and having people go, but you changed it. Improved upon it. That's what you did. Improved upon it. So now we've got the face. Good thing we practiced faces. Uh, Get that closer, get that on top, maybe. I'm gonna fold my paper so I can get closer. Ugh, there we go. So we've got more of a profile view, but this is actually nice because we can see that eyebrow cut right in there that we've been drawing for this lesson. So I'm gonna stick in my eye line. I'm also gonna sharpen my pencil because I'm getting into some smaller details here. And I'm going to cut out that eyebrow line. Oops, not that far back. We are in profile, so it's not going to reach very far back into our ball. It's going to stay pretty much up front. 
And we've got pretty much just one eye showing, so I can draw in my eye socket. Darken in the eyebrow. Shave off that tiny little bit at the bottom. Fill in the rest with the eye. So wait, if, 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 if Animal Crossing, I mean, Flying King, <laughs> Flying King, mm -hmm. they have like the, the eye, the, the, the pattern on their eye with the eyebrow. Mm -hmm. What does it look like on a cheetah? Isn't that what we're doing right now? I don't know. <laughs> Never mind. That's what I'm trying to do. I don't know if I'm succeeding. I'm not an official Disney artist, but I'm trying to apply the style of the lions just to a different type of cat. I did draw a little too small this time. It's hard to get in those details. Well, what does the, the tear, the black tear pattern look like on that? Oh, I got to draw the mouth in first because I won't know where to put the tear pattern until I know where it ends. Well, that's a very long faced cheetah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just sketching in a rough, uh, what do you call it? Like space. No. Sketches. Yep. It might not actually be that long. Uh, once you got in some kind of general shape for the head that you're going for, we're going to go ahead and slice off the top of the nose. Thinking of that profile, we're only going to get half of a nose. Then we'll come down with that line, and it has to start with a frown, but after that, it can come back up. And if you want to open your, the mouth, just like in the picture, you can add in that other shape right underneath. Isn't it true that she is pant? Yeah. And they don't have those big boxy chins like the lions. They're rather slim. So I've got just a small form right underneath the mouth there. I'll come right back into the neck. And don't forget to shape the head. We don't want the head to look like a ball on top. It's actually quite flat. So I'll we'll flatten that out. Also, their eye line comes to the bottom of their ears rather than to that inner fold that we were doing with the lions. So I'm going to have the ears as my eye line. Sit on top of that eye line. Stephanie, she's got well, 15 minutes left of class. <laughs> I just googled quickly, like googled like cheetahs for like the reference, and man, they're pretty. They are amazing animals. And also the really cute. cute. Cuddly and cute, is that what you said? Yeah, they remind me of like a house cat, kind of. Not that I've seen, but <laughs> the babies that the remind babies. me of has cat kind of. So our forms are really really smooth at this point. If you want to add a few fur tufts, particularly under the belly here, and at the 
peak of any curve, such as like the curve of the knee, you can add a little puff. On the curve of the tail, I can add some fur texture. Whoops, let's get on camera so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Are you trying to take a picture, Stephanie? I'm doing a video clip. Oh, a video clip, got it. <laughs> so there's my underdrawing all complete. Nice. I'll pick my kneaded eraser, or if you don't have one, you can use a regular eraser and just erase with a lighter touch. So I'm just going to lighten up my blue lines and go over it with pen. Hey, Dad. Hey, guys, can I give you a fun cheetah fact? Sure. Okay. Yeah, did you know that, um, like, apparently cheetahs are actually very nervous animals. Really? And in order to calm their nerves, often, like, when they get, like, a little cheetah cub, they'll also, like, pair it with a dog yeah. as a sort of buddy to help, you know, calm the cheetah's nerves and to give them a friend, sort of. Just like goats with horses, huh? Yeah. Speaking of goats, my daughter's doe finally had her two kids. Oh. We've got rain here. Well, you probably know that, Betsy. You guys we have, have rain down here, too, yeah. It's oh, weird. yeah, that was raining a minute ago. Huh. Out popped the goats. She's way over here. My daughter said she coughed and they came out. <laughs> well, that's good, though. One of, uh, when we used to have goats, uh, or our neighbor did, one of them had some complications, like the goat was either turned around and couldn't come out of the canal very well. So they had to call a vet out, and it was a whole whole thing. And Nikki had to do all that with a, um, another one. Vet mm -hmm. was on the phone talking her through it, and she was up to her elbows. and Yeah. Goat. So I'm always glad to hear when it's a smooth Me too. Smooth especially birth. Since it was so late. The goat's legs were swollen, just like people. Wow. Yeah. Nice. The form of my back leg got a little wonky. Oh, well. How are you going to put those spots in? <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> I'm going to get to that right now. So obviously there's a billion spots. This is we're just doing a simplified version, a cartoon version. We're going to enlarge them quite a bit. And Hold up. Be right back. Okay. I'm going to draw them smaller toward the head, a little bit bigger on the body, and kind of in a general checkerboard pattern. You can break that pattern every once in a while to give it some variation, but for the most part, it makes a nice cheetah pattern. Okay, sorry, I had to let the cat out of the cat room. No problem. Pretty sure my dog's gonna want out the closer to the dinner. Okay. Hopefully she'll do it right in between classes when I'm switching from this one to the other one. <laughs> and we'll never know it, but now. We'll never know. Dalmatian cat. Mm -hmm. 
Is that stripes on the tail? Yeah, I just saw that yeah. myself. Oh. Maybe the spots are so close together, it looks like a stripe. No, it looks like stripes. They just get more broken up as they go up the tail. All right, I'll give you guys one more minute <laughs> to finish this one up and let's see if we can do the underdrawing of a running pose. Just the underdrawing in 10 minutes and you can finish that one up on your own. I have people coming to buy bunnies, so I'll be a spectator only. Oh, okay. That's two, two went to new homes today, eh? Huh? Was that two little bunnies sailing away with? That was yesterday, yep, yep. Today I've been, what is that stuff you put, rust inhibitor on the, the cages I got secondhand? Oh. I've been painting, just mostly on me. Yeah. <laughs> but with adults I have like, 19 or 20 rabbits and I only want four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so something's got to Well, I had 12 babies. Wow. Yeah, usually they, my last only had one, so I was expecting maybe three. <laughs> I have 12. <laughs> 12. I have 11 and one less adult, so. The numbers are going in the right direction. And then I wonder, are they going to take good care of it? You know, all that. Yeah, I don't know how that is. Yeah. All right, running. Oh, that, that those running ones. That's motion, like our class on Wednesday, going from yeah. school. Holy cow. This one's more challenging. This one's more, a little more straightforward. So if you just want to practice, Getting those shapes down, I would recommend the top one. If you want a little more of a challenge, I'd recommend the bottom one. Bottom one. <laughs> <laughs> challenge. Let's go. Bottom one's really interesting. Yeah. We'll leave. Actually, I'll just leave those there. I'm not going to narrate this one. This is your practice time. Okay, we can do this. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Kristen. Going to do it. And Mikey. And John? John? Frank. Frank. Dirt, how do you get the leg in the dirt? I mean, the dirt covers up the foot. Mm -hmm. so you just do a little cloudy shapes down here, a little more vague cloudy shapes in the back. Okay. It's actually helpful. It's like hands in the pockets. You don't have to draw the hands. <laughs> and then that other leg is way tucked up under her chest, up to her chest. Yeah. I think it would help to do the negative space first on this girl. Yeah, it kind of depends on um, the kind of uh, drawing you want to do. If you just want to uh, and copy it over accurately, then yes, absolutely use the negative space. If you were like animating this for a film, you wouldn't copy the pose verbatim because it doesn't look as well when it's drawn. There are mm -hmm. things that happens in photographs that when you draw it, it just looks weird. Oh, okay. So you're absolutely right. If you're copying the picture for a painting or for a drawing and you just want to get it down as realistic as possible, use that negative space. It'll help you a lot with accuracy. 
sure sure would be hard to do that back leg not making it look like it's a big belly on her or something yeah Mm-hmm. See that's yeah that's exactly it. See if I was that back leg, yeah, you gotta change yeah. that. If I just did this negative space exactly in a drawing, somebody's gonna say, "Oh, how come you made her so fat?" So right. I'm gonna have to figure out how do I make that leg more clear in my drawing in eight minutes, <laughs> so that uh, you know I don't get the that kind of reaction from my viewers. Yep, that's what I was. After today, we only have two more big cat classes. Ah. I'm letting you know because on the last one, you're going to do a family of cats on your own. A and test. You're giving that? us a test. Yes. <laughs> no, just as a, as a friendly review. I'm, I'm going to narrate mine, so if you just want to draw along with me, that's fine. But uh, it would be yes. a nice chance if you really want to do bobcats, and we never got the bobcats, then... Uh, you can draw an adult male, an adult female, and a cub. Wait, all in, in, in our off time? In uh, the very last class, like the last Friday in June, we're going to do a little family portrait. We'll do the poses together, but then you're going to put your own details on top. Oh, yeah. I think one thing would be cool would be like surf all cats. Do it. See, we never got to those. So you can go, hey, now I have a chance. I like them because, like, their ears are so big that they're so close together. They remind me of Garfield. Oh. <laughs> Show me a picture, Mikey. Of what a serval cat? Serval, S-E-R-V-E-L. I can look it up. C-E-R, I think. You gotta look it up because I can't remember how to spell. That's when I just ask Siri or ask Google. <laughs> Show me a picture of a serval cat. Oh, it's S E R V A L and then cat. That's what Suri says. And then it took me to my photos of a worm. A worm? Oh. Suri's having an off day. Just five minutes left. Remember, it's an underdrawing, so hopefully you will get all four legs, a head and a tail. That's the goal. Doesn't have to be finished. Yeah. They look like that except with big ears. And they're much smaller. Funny looking. You. Have you seen that one where it's like it goes like 360? 360 what? Like its body. Oh, you can turn it? Cool. Yeah, hold on. I'll, sh- I'll show you guys the image. Hold on. I'll, let me grab it. Like this one. That's cute. Ooh. Those are some really giant ears. Okay. <laughs> Looks like it's a little bigger than I thought too. Look, it's standing next to that guy helping him cook. Wow. Wow. That litter box would be awesome. (laughs) This is pretty elegant. You like this one, Kristen? Oh, let me spotlight it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cute. That's pretty elegant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hold, I was about to share something, but then it turns out the host disabled sharing. See, like once again. Why? I didn't disable it. They started out that way. That's a default. That's not my fault. <laughs> Try it now. Okay. Okay, here's the picture. Whoa. Oh, oh. oh. That's oh crazy. man. Talk about oh. flexibility, huh? Yikes, looks like a snake almost. That is something. Yeah, and and the stairs are curvy too, so that's quite a bit. (laughs) It has my arch enemy stairs. Stairs. 
Well, now you got me excited. You're going to have to draw this on the last day of class. Just back just back to our, our model. We only have a minute left. Back to our Sorry. Model. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> no, yeah. Just, just that cat. Not that exact picture, but that species of cat. It's a good cat. Ginormous ears. Such a We're little the cat. Foxes of the big cat world. Yeah. Okay, did you also know that some people breed their house cats with those to make like these weird half wild cats? I'm not surprised. Like humans do crazy things. Yeah. Some have a backyard full of rabbits and tortoises and chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Just one minute left. So I think we'll go ahead and stop here so that we can take a look at how far we got <laughs> before we cross over onto the other class. Whoops, I'm gonna throw in a shadow though, real quick. There we go. That's how mine came out. Wow. I kind of think this leg looks broken because I was trying to copy the picture too closely. <laughs> but, well, right. I like that, that paw in the front though. It really gives you, brings it up. Yeah, I made that one a little bit bigger. I don't, yeah, I'm still not super happy with it, but I think the back part looks pretty good. Yeah, you did a great job. <laughs> All right, who's next? Situation. I'm going to show you my other one because I don't like that one very well. But oh, what? Frank beat you to it. I'm going to put Frank's uh, up first. Oh, put Frank. Frank's yes. Oh, you want? Oh, to excellent. Really good. Yeah, I can see uh, the tail got chopped off there, but <laughs> our brain will fix that. It'll tell us it's still a tail. Yeah, I want to get into Photoshop. It'll be fun. <laughs> Good practice. I like where the head is set. You really that little lowering it down. That's how they look. That's good. Yeah. Very cool. All right, now you can go, Kristen. So here's my cheetah on the rock. And good. I put his shoulder straight over the rock. So uh -huh. then it looks like he's either falling off backwards, but I'm pretending that he's just landing on the rock. Yeah. Uh <laughs> there you go. He just he's landed there. Yeah. Going to move forward and get his balance before he stops. But but it was just the alignment of that shoulder. If I moved the shoulder forward. I think everything would have fit right. Show me the one you don't like. No, it's just, after I saw Betsy. <laughs> Teacher, that looks fine. Hey, yeah, teacher. but it, but hers looks alive, and mine looks. Oh, but it has motion. It had, but hers. <laughs> Next time. Next, Next time. time. Well, there's Frank's first one. Oh yeah. Oh, good. Wow, good. Now you you put the shoulder straight over the rock too, but yeah. he's you twisted him a little so he looks balanced there. Why does the twisted save it? It works <laughs> great. Yeah, mine. He's got to just keep leaning forward, or he's going to fall over. <laughs> Good practice, though. Good practice all around. Okay. So I'm going to end this meeting so I can start the next one. Thank you guys for coming and joining me. Just two more classes left. We can do it. We can do it. We will do it. <laughs> all right. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.